May 26, 2022. To order, I show we have a quorum uh, with at this time Ms. Jenny and Councilman Jenny. All right, so welcome. Um, first up, we have a uh, agenda. Any additions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
know, yeah, we, it's only been a year, uh, but thank you for helping me and kind of showing me certain things in the days that you've been there. And um, once again, you've always kind of had a smile on your face and definitely welcoming and helping. So appreciate that. It's going to be nice for sure. Thank you for being an awesome work mom. Uh, you, you're always, you, you're always there. You're always, you're always near me, telling me I need to eat more, which I, which I appreciate. Uh, I've always appreciated you've always been available if if someone said well Julie's taking care of that I, I can rest easy because I know you always would um, reliable professional friendly always upbeat and smiling it's it your smile helps me feel better during the day so I will greatly miss you and uh, don't be a stranger well, thank you all it's, it's interesting she's never told me to eat
There's definitely no public. There's obviously a concern. Yeah. 
know how much reserves do we have a limit on it? So there's no statutory limit. The local government, the local, um, the LGC recommends 80%. But if you tap into 8%, they're going to start sending you nasty letters. They basically, they have a, a record of all municipalities and what their fund balances are. And they look at this stuff and they track it. So even if, even if you're 15%, you're well above the minimum they require. If they look at yours in comparison to what other municipalities, size, population, and all that stuff, if you're not similar, then they start looking into it to make sure there's nothing that they need to step in and do. So we're, we're well here. Yeah, um, it's pretty high. Oh, I'm trying to I thought it was at least been 30, 40. I was about to say like 40. Not, no, it's 90, 95 point in um, of total general fund expenditures. Unassigned fund balance from general fund was 1.3 for approximately 95% of total general fund expenditures. So we're, we're good. Okay, very good. Alright, so I'm going to make a motion to pass the Yeah, so this is just a temporary use permit application for the fireworks uh, for July 4th by Firethorn. Um, based off of our ordinance, they have to, uh, for this special event, have to hold a public hearing and council approves the permit after the public hearing um, occurs. Um, staff has reviewed it. The permit application is complete. Uh, they meet all of our ordinance. Um, regulations, planning board reviewed it and unanimously recommended the approval of the application uh, with the two specific conditions of uh, staff also recommended, which the applicant shall be responsible for acquiring any permits required by other local, state, and federal agencies, and also that parking is not allowed along Marvin, Marvin Road to the extent where, you know, that, that's part of their condition, but, you know, it's to our, to our extent to enforce it. I think in previous years they put up like no parking signs on Marvin Road. So, right. other than that, is there any? Is it, is the applicant, <coughs> the applicant is Pyro shows. yeah uh, Joel Matthews from Pyro Shows East Coast Incorporated. So I have questions. Did they do this? Do you want to ask them them them? What do you mean questions on the specific show? Well, what I mean, I can answer this question. Well, fire fire shows up where they are represented. We obviously got the signs up. Same company that was last year. They didn't. Do, I don't think. I don't think they've done it the last two years. But I'm pretty sure it's the same company slash spin the same guy that's done it. Is this the guy we use from Arbonne? I don't think. It's, yeah. yeah, it's the same. Yeah. Um, the only thing I would say is uh, good job getting this ahead of time because I know we were scrambling a few years back to get yeah, this so fast. And we were slightly <laughs> scrambling. We didn't have it. Um, yeah, so it well, actually wasn't fast by that. So doing this in May is, is probably the latest I would recommend for sure. Yes. And it was five years ago. Maybe. Yeah, so yeah. first that happened. Stop it. <laughs> so, all, right. Right. all right, so any other questions from uh, or regarding this? Usually uh, it's not a big issue, just money. So, yes. What? I was just going to say one last thing is that this is.
technically a quasi-judicial, like so you have to say the finding of facts so in your motion. Um, after, I've provided, after they close the public yeah, hearing. Yeah, after, the, after they close, after you close it in the um, draft motion, you'll see the first part, which is basically saying that it's all there. you find it there, and then the second part is to approve it with those uh, following conditions. That's all I got. Motion to close. Motion to close, sir. Yep, motion to close first. You need to first go. Other order, yeah, the other one first. So you, I make a motion and find that and then just read it. I make a motion and find that. The proposed degrees will not materially So therefore, so, I, mean, so therefore I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was good. With the following conditions. Right. With the following With conditions. With the following conditions. I really don't see this. Do you guys see this? In the draft motion? No, why do you see the draft motion? The application shall be responsible for the requirements required. It's on my screen. Requirements required. Oh, or just. Go ahead, you can finish it. Is Andy making it? It shall be responsible for acquiring any permits required by other local, state, federal, and agencies and parking is not allowed on our road to the extent that the village shall allow us. The extent of, yeah. Is that it? Yep. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Really? I like that. I did not see it. All right. All right. <laughs> Village Hall. <laughs> Duly noted.
Uh, next up, item, item E, item of discussion. First up, review of council minutes from uh, 5, 10, 22, budget work session and regular meetings. All right, from the papers. I did not either. Anyone else? So if it's okay with you guys, I'll put this on, put these on the consent agenda for the June seventh meeting. Yes, please. That'll work. No other uh, questions or concerns. Oh wait, you know what? What's happening? Let me, let me look. talking about, Joe? Page 18, uh, on the comments. Three, two, three down. Congratulations on their Oh, it's supposed to be new. I'll fix that. Yeah. I'll fix that. I'll fix that. That's fine. So I'll put the... I'll, I'll, I'll fix that and it'll be on the consent agenda. So you guys have already called for a public hearing for this for the June 7th meeting. Um, but I wanted to go through this. This, en this encompasses a lot of different changes, one being the change in the, spe or the special use permit for pools, setbacks for detached accessory structures, setbacks for pools, as well as the biggest thing that um, why it's on the agenda is the accessory dwelling discussion. Um, I can briefly go through this and, you know, get some comments feedback or I can just get right to the accessory dwelling. I mean, <clears throat> the biggest highlights, I mean, for the main changes is on detached accessory structures, which is everything like a, you know, garage, shed building, all of that S side setbacks just going to be 10 feet across the board. The way it used to read is the same as the principal structure, meaning I would have to go figure out what each setback was for each development when it was approved. Um, so this simplifies it and it's, pretty standard 10 feet on side and rear for any type of detached accessory structures is um, like, I, like I said, I pulled for about 10 different ordinances and it was anywhere from five to 10, sometimes 15. Um, then getting into agriculture buildings, this is kind of a part of that discussion from the animal chicken stuff. Uh, basically here, Everything stayed the same, but I took out poultry from, it used to be poultry, other livestock and waste removal. And it said um, 150 feet from setbacks. That's really not doable in a lot of areas. So, ba so basically doing it the same as horses, but then making it at least a minimum of 150 feet from adjoining dwelling. Um, so then it takes away from potential, any type of issue with smell, noise, whatever. Um, and then 
for other livestock, kept it at 150 feet, but then also made it 250 feet from any adjoining dwelling. Because once again, that's going to be the biggest issue of area of concern is the noise or smell of, of those animals and, and from the primary residence. We good? Okay, getting, and then getting into swimming pools, basically lowered the setbacks five feet from 20 to 15. That reasoning being is you've got developments like Weddington Chase. Um, Weddington Chase is a good example because it's larger. But their side setbacks, when approved, I think was 10 feet on the side. And so the pool language really kind of created a, like it, it was very descriptive and I couldn't really find any flexibility. And so even with certain lots that are like shaped weird, um, once again, most ordinances that I, I reference from sometimes have the pool setbacks are the same as detached accessory structures or it's anywhere from 10 to 15 feet. Um, so basically the only change there is it knocked everything down five feet. Pool equipment still has to be 20 feet from rear side because that's, that's going to be the biggest issue there is noise and, um, from, from the equipment. That being said, special use permit used to be pretty much you guys got a lot of special use permits for any time a pool uh, was in a rear yard that abutted a side yard. Now it's basically permitted as long as it meets um, the following, the, the special requirements. Legally, you can put special requirements on certain uses and if they meet them, they're just granted, they can be, they're just treated as permitted uses, meaning I can sign off on the permit, they don't have to go to any type of public hearing or, or council approval. And we just made those setbacks 10 feet higher on each one. So it's making sure that distance from that rear yard to that side yard um, is greater. And then we also added in basically if those things can't be met, then that's when it will come for a special use permit. And that's a decision for you guys to meet or to decide on. What's the budget plan? For Dang. unless they cannot meet those specific. So I'm looking at like the clean copy. Um, but where it says F swimming pool and rear yard that abuts a side yard, if it meets that it has a, that the pool is at least a 25 foot rear setback from what measured from water to water's edge and 20 feet, um, side yard, as long as it meets that, then no, it does not have to go to planning board. Okay. Um, the letter of approval from adjacent property owners, that just as a recommendation, planning board like wanted it. I don't think we really have the authority. I haven't talked. That's if he was here tonight. Part of that was to have some of that discussion. But I'm gonna I'm gonna follow up with him on everything before the public hearing in two weeks. No, you guys have already called it. I'm going through it because the biggest thing, if you got as you're calling the uh, earlier. So like, correct. If there's any recommended changes or questions, you, you know, it's all open for discussion. You can't, and that's why, I mean, it's just, it's, it, we, the, in that copy, I'm looking at my old one, I'm pretty sure in the memo, or the one I included in your guys' packet says it's strongly recommended. So. Well, I mean, you could have a jerk for a neighbor. Correct. Well, and that was the thing, though, is you guys didn't necessarily care about it, but the three or four that I did since I've been here in July, every time, planning board always asks that question to the applicant. Even though I tell them that's not really... And it, like, that's, that's infringing on people's yeah. rights. And that's, so have to ask that's why it's just strongly recommended, but at the same time, like, hey, if they have it, that's great. And a lot of the time in certain developments, I'm sure you guys have HOAs that have to also approve certain things like this. And most of the time, HOAs will probably require restrict. Yeah, so um, that's why it's just kind of, like I said, a recommendation. <laughs> Is there any questions about that part before we get into the main thing that I want to discuss with you guys, which is the accessory dwelling part. Everybody good? Okay, so if you guys recall at the in the planner or the May, I guess regular meeting, I mentioned how planning board wanted to amend or thought about or wanted to discuss with you guys amending this accessory dwelling part and you guys just said, hey, let's go ahead and I had planning board go ahead and recommend this text, but I wanted this is what I wanted to present tonight because if we want to scrap it or change it, we can do that during the public hearing. You guys can approve as amended. Um, 
bit, main thing was accessory dwellings are meant like as in like you know a, if it's a pool house that actually can be like lived upon or stayed in or if it's a mother-in-law suite above a detached garage something like that our ordinance read that basically it had to be attached which in my opinion is the dumbest thing because that's the same thing as adding another room on your house for somebody to live in so it wasn't a true accessory dwelling um, what's being proposed is basically to allow a separate standalone structure this was pulled i think i used a lot of like what either it was either huntersville or davidson um, and their requirements uh, basically so it would allow it if it's a um, but it would have to be a special use permit i don't really think we're going to get a lot of these because to be honest either people already have a pool house that's not quote unquote a dwelling because it doesn't have like a kitchenette or something like that but somebody might be staying in it or there's other things that people on the permit didn't say things but i've heard rumors or people say well i know so and so has this um so it would be allowed to either be attached within or separate from the uh principal uh single family dwelling it <clears throat> the principal use of the lot shall be basically single family dwelling meaning if like here at village hall we couldn't put you know a little condo type or tiny home house out here because the primary use of the property has to be the single uh residential um no more than one accessory dwelling per single deeded lot and the accessory dwelling shall be owned by the same person as the principal dwelling meaning you guys couldn't build another house on there and then sell that house even though it's on the same lot it must stay in the it's basically just becomes part of the property um that was a good question planning board thought the same thing we didn't put anything about renting here because honestly i don't know if we have that authority to even put um that that is a question that is a question for chaplain especially because it's being proposed to be done as a special use meaning if we got an application for this that's one specific condition i i think the council could put on the uh, approval um yeah. so but yeah special use for somebody to stay in it or just for it to, to be built to exist but it, it's basically this all new like i said there shouldn't technically be any quote-unquote accessory dwellings that are detached from the house in mark but i have a question if it's a detached living do they have to have a bathroom a kitchen yeah basically a dwelling is defined as having a bedroom a cooking source and a bathroom okay and where they were, are they going back out the street or are they going to hook on to the current source of the uh, primary residence that's open for however if it's being proposed i i can't i mean in, in most most instances if they're on septic and have their septic has the available bedroom they can tie into that and then if not then it's treated as probably either a separate tap or tapping into the line of the existing residential but that's approved by union county so because i know what my understanding was is that we couldn't have either like you couldn't have a bathroom and a kitchen you correct have either or. because a bedroom's defined the, the a bedroom's going to be is an open room in a structure basically from building code standpoint as long as it if it's a standalone structure like a pool house and it's you know an open concept that living area whatever can be it would be deemed as a bedroom so yes basically we would we could the way people kind of got around with the standalone detached you know pool houses or whatever is that when they submitted their permit in the building plans it didn't have anything for a kitchen heat like a either a stove or range i think is what our ordinance uh defined it as or a bathroom most of the time people would probably put in a bathroom and then stuff like that i mean i've had people ask me like what if i put a microwave i mean it it's technically if it's a stove yeah right. some type of yeah Cause that's because that's where i'm that's i'm trying to understand this because the upstairs of my shop mm -hmm. is 650 square feet there will be a, my plan is to have a bathroom and a small kitchenette up there because it is a recreational area my pool yeah. table that kind of thing and it's 50 feet from my house so i don't want to keep you know to the house to use the restroom or whatever you want to be able to entertain it. so you know i'll have a beer keg or here and, and a place to wash glasses and stuff like that so i would have to apply for a special use permit for that to finish that out yeah because previously even if you retrofitted if you were to get a permit to upfit that 
it would still raise that question because as I said, if you're going in and putting a bathroom in some type of kitchenette, it's an open room that, could, that makes it livable at that point. So in theory, I could have denied it right. because of that. So now this gives that opportunity for things like that. It's not meaning that it necessarily be lived on, but it just kind of clarifies. I mean, um, our ordinance was the only one I ever saw that only allowed them to be attached. Um, and I wasn't even going to. So, so let me throw a scenario out. If it's attached and it's on, happens to be on one acre and it's a detached garage, so now you put another kitchenette and a bathroom and a bedroom, you essentially just violated your own ordinance. Because now you have two. It's not, I, it's not, you're not violating because it's an accessory. But what it's, I'm saying is you actually have two separate families, one in the main home and one in the detached area. You could, but it's still. So, you, but it's two homes, livable homes within one acre lot, is that not right? Correct, but it's not, an accessory dwelling, like I said, is completely defined separately as a single family dwelling. It meets, it would, to be deemed a dwelling, it has to meet that from NC Building Code, um, which is the, basically that simple definition of having those three things of a bedroom, cooking source, and bathroom. However, like, it would, it's not, the way this, the, this ordinance, one, it's not being accessed from a separate driveway. Um, there's a square footage maximum or uh, allowment. Um, so you're not you're not violating your ordinance because technically it's still one dwe it's one home per acre. I mean it's this is an accessory. It's a mother-in-law suite. It's a guest hat. I mean guest bedroom and a pool. Something like that. It's. But could it easily be turned into a rental. It could, but that's the same thing. It's 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 that that's where that gray area of rental. Yeah. The biggest yeah the biggest thing here is when and it's kind of like you know Barcroft and the whole rental thing like. The state changed the whole, uh, the state changed one, the definition of a rental, basically encompassing short-term and long-term rentals all in one. So you couldn't regulate the difference. The second part about that is they also took a lot of authority away from the municipalities on regulating rentals. Um, with that being said, it's gonna be up to, in some situations, the HOA, and HOAs can still outlaw rentals. They can still, I mean, stuff like that. And, and the HOA can also not approve correct this still has to meet all setbacks has to still like i said there's a square foot in maximum it just it clarifies i like i said i i've got a whole nother folder of about 10 municipal ordinances and it's like n all of them they're all allowed but at the same but they all have different kind of guidelines but they're all allowed as detached there's not a single one that only allows them as Attached because, like I said, that's pretty much another room on your house. No, it's not five. This would only, if you read six, it says that the dwelling, the accessory dwelling, shall not exceed 650 square feet of the first floor area of the principal, or 50 percent, or yeah, or 50 percent of the principal dwelling. So if it's a, how big's your, how big's your your, um, your building? Yeah, it's 1,000 feet down the bottom and 650 upstairs. So you're, will you be covered with the 650? Yeah, but the, the downstairs, the shop, the, the wood shop. That doesn't count. The 650 only applies to the, the use of the accessory use dwellings. Of the okay. Well, why does it say that? You're looking at a wrong section. I'm looking at what? You're looking at... You should... Correct. We're at. We're still on that. We're on the last page of accessory dwelling. The except that that's for the agriculture building. That's six. Huh? You are having trouble with an East Rod. Which one? Which one? It should be four pages. It should be on the last page. It should be. It's G accessory uses and dwelling. I would look at. Which Which one is she? Oh, are you pulling up the original language? You need the, uh, of what's already on the books? 
there's one memo, there's two, there's three attachments. One being the proposed changes, which has the red and blue, and then there's a clean copy, which is all blue of what's being added. I mean, that's the clean copy. And then there's a copy of what our current ordinance states. So I'm on the first attachment. I want to reduce the number of attachments. The one that the one page I'm looking at is all black. That's the wrong one. Because that's our that's what our current ordinance states. No, that's for on lots greater than three. That's it could not exceed five thousand square feet if it's on lot a lot greater than three acres. Currently, accessory structures cannot exceed two thirds of the um, square footage of the principal dwelling. So, on those that five thousand square feet would be for a big barn on a large acreage because a five thousand square foot barn isn't that big. Talking about barns. The barns get pretty sizable. Alright, who's got questions? So why was this why is this a big issue? I'm trying to go back and remember what you said every day. Why is this such a big issue? Do I? No. I said I wasn't. I wasn't really going to touch this because part of that reason is some of the same questions you've asked me. I mean, it, it's a, you know how Marvin is, and but there was a few of them that asked about it. So I proposed. Yes, they had me basically. I said I would talk to you guys, and then so, correct. Correct. But Chad would not have seen this. No. In your opinion, Hunter, but this, what's driving this? No, I feel like there's something that. Well, to be honest, I've had, I've had probably between in the year that I've worked here, I've probably fielded about anywhere from 10 to 20 calls of people asking if they could build a mother in law suite for their in laws that are moving in or whatever. And technically, no. I mean, I said you can, but it can't have a bathroom or it can't have a kitchen. And they're like, well, what's the point? I'm like, I, that's what our ordinance reads. Um, so I, the, the true drive behind it, I, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but it does, like I said, this updates it to be more just standard, in my opinion. I mean, like it's, it's, it's weird to only allow it as a attached building. Like I said, that... Why, why go through the special use permit process when you can literally build another building on or a room onto your house and not say that it's a different dwelling, quote unquote? I mean, yeah, I think that you're, you're in a neighborhood that has an HOA, you're going to catch anything that's not. If it's in that position, it's not going to be I just know this came up uh, a couple of years ago uh, with prior. This was being kicked around, and he wanted to define just what he just said is you know what defines this session. It doesn't have a bathroom, it doesn't have a kitchen, either one um, or none, and it was being tossed around. But I don't know what happened to it. it I remember that it kind of died. Yeah, so and I don't know what happened. I think they have more Basically, like if. It's really your guys' call. We can we can lead if you guys are good with every other change and don't want to uh, touch accessory use and dwelling. I step. I don't have a preference because, like I said, from a staff point, I wasn't going to originally touch this until planning board asked questions and recommended we look at this. Um, I don't. I don't think it hurts. I think the the specific conditions for it to for for council to approve the special use permit is pretty. One, I mean, it, they're pretty good to make to ensure protection. Um, the real big question I have a staff member that came up is that from a rental standpoint, can we regulate renting? I mean, rental. Well, it's, uh, like you said, though, the state has pretty well taken all the authority in a lot of ways. So 
can't really say that they couldn't rent. Yeah. Um, and it's the only downfall I can see to a lot of people want that extra mother in law suite or whatever for family if they need. Um, me, I just like the recreational space. That's what I was looking for. Um, so, and it just prohibits that, you know. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I look back at some previous permits, and even I, like I said, it's like, you know, you, we can put on there from a staff level that it can't be lived on or lived in or X, Y, and Z, but if somebody put in a kitchen, I mean, there's certain, th I, like, I know of certain places that have maybe, you know, a kitchenette and a bathroom. I don't know if anybody's living in it. It's really going to come down to, one, like I said, the HOAs are going to play a, play a role in this just as they do for any other type of um Kind of accessory structure, but but that would come for, to you to get the permit, or will that come to us? Come to you. So we can always deny it. Correct. It's, if it so doesn't, use permit, so it has to come to us. Yeah, that's like why well, I, I wasn't going to take it out of not being a special use. I think that's, I, I think that's that's good. I also, like I said, I don't foresee a lot. I don't like if this gets approved as presented. I do not see us like having ten special use permits for accessory dwellings and. You know, the next day. Next year. Yeah. I mean, I'm not lucky enough to have a basement for entertainment, so I had to build something to bump around. <laughs> 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 so I had to which, build one. Which, I had to build one above ground, which, like, which gets into uh, so rental. <laughs> It's more for, for people like me who have a decent sized lot that can build an accessory structure such as a shop in their backyard. And the biggest, I'm like here to, you know, it would only, how much I said? So basically like in instances where this is, a, this would only may allow them in the rear yard. In some instances where you get a detached garage that's in the side yard or something like that, they would not be allowed to put that in the, the top, I mean, or, you know, on the second floor. Um, set, you know, greater setbacks and stuff could also be something to, to consider, but like I said, this is kind of... Pool cabanas would be allowed in a HOA, and it would fall under this if they had the criteria. Well, they only have the kitchen and the bathroom. But if you have a pool house with a kitchen and a bathroom in it, then it falls under this, which would be allowed in an HOA. Half my bathroom, half my bedroom. But see, a bedroom just. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's not the. Yeah. Like, it would be like a pool house, but not necessarily be closed in with walls, right? They're so like, here, so you could have a bathroom on the back. And that's not going to be considered. Why are you going to bring the bedroom? And that's. If you have an enclosed pool house and you have a bathroom and a kitchen head in there, then it would fall into this category. Well, that's if, though. If it's open, the living, that, that's the thing though, the living space, if it's a quote unquote living room or like gathering room, that could be defined as a bedroom. And if it, I have to double check with building code. And, 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 and like, you can't go through another room in order to get to the other That's what, so if it's open and most, I mean, if you have a pool house that has a window, Closet, I guess I'll have to check with what the actual state definition. I think ours does require that, but I don't know if that's that gray area. Pool house technically just screen all the way around. That's what I'm saying. You could have like like Jamie's. <laughs> 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 but it could be a pool. Like if, if you have a room, it could be a pool. It's not a pool. You got to have it here. Yeah, I mean. Depends on how you build your pool house. If it's totally enclosed, you have a kitchen and a bathroom, then it would well, be. Yeah. That would be the same. Right. But is your HOA going to govern that? Whether it's closed in or screened in? Probably I mean, not. They have to approve it. I mean, that's the part. Yeah, right. That's a. Every HOA is going to be different. Yeah. I don't have problems with this. Like, does anybody have like a. Like, I have a hang up with it. I, I like the idea because it 
allows me to do what I want to do. Okay. But I mean, but what the thing is is uh, what's it? I mean, what? How much of a big can of worms are we going to open up by allowing a, an accessory structure to have? I don't know. Yeah. Exactly. So then it, it well, keeps us from getting into trouble in, in a, whatever specific instance that it might be an issue with the particular location that it is, where most of them wouldn't be any issue at all. So it, it, what happens is probably you get into an issue of subdividing, but this is a subdividing. No. It's a succession question. So. You, you're, not, you're not going to be able to subdivide it. I'm going to make a few phone calls and trying to figure out what the biggest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, tell us what you find out, Joe, if there was some kind of specific thing. Here, in planning boards, Bob, they didn't necessarily, there wasn't necessarily one person. This was a joint thing. I'm just wondering, what's, what's the end of this? Let's try it. Let's try it. Why why are we just, I want to I get, I get the pool. Yeah. And side yards and stuff like that. It seems like I haven't seen, I've been here for 10 years and I haven't seen one pool that we shut down. Yeah. If I recall, I don't think it came from the planning board. It was, it had come up as something to address and it was like, Okay, why? And Do you I remember who brought it to Christina? I think I think Brooke had brought it up about trying to make it a little bit more specific. It was discussed years ago. It was, right? It was sound and performing. All right. Well, we, we have a public hearing. Yeah. yeah, and I'll, I'll get with Chaplin on, on it all so that he can make sure he can be able to answer any questions. But the biggest thing is, like I said, if you guys were not for changing it, I was just going to go ahead and scrap it to an extent, but if there's, you know, a consensus that changing it is worth looking into, then I'm going to leave it and we can discuss further at the public hearing. I mean, I, I have, like I said, I don't have any, like, big issue with this at all, although I can kind of find out what was driving it. And I do, I mean, I do remember this coming up before, and I remember it being an issue and it was kind of a big deal. And I think that the process was specific to the neighborhood. The, what brought this up specifically, like I said, there was nothing, there was nothing specific. It, I went through this and basically, I can't remember who, somebody asked, well, what about it, the accessory dwellings were doing anything with that? Is it? Oh. Bjorn presented this that the county received twenty five thousand dollars from that development in uh, Lancaster County and want to partner with the village on how to spend it. Um, we kind of discussed three different options. Biggest thing is so I trying to get a consensus from 
from you guys and so I can proceed with working with the county to, to utilize these funds. I talked to Bjorn yesterday. Basically, staff recommend, or my recommendation, I haven't really, I mean, if Christina wants to chip in, um, is looking at doing option two, just having that $25,000 available for any type of overages. I know it's only a drop in the bucket, but $25,000. And then for some reason, if we don't have any overages, <laughs> <laughs> we can then use the remaining of those funds to pursue option number one and getting a study done for the Joe Carr, um, Marvin Road roundabout. Because the biggest thing is then the if we get a project scope or study done for that intersection, we then can go and get their critical intersection grant that's been mentioned for actual funds to have that project completed. So. That's that's my recommendation. Um, you know, it's kind of up to you guys, uh, but I think if we want to just have that as contingency for overages, if we don't use it, then we can always go to option number one. I vote for number two because I'm going to look at it as Lancaster County is the only one to contribute to our law enforcement because it's going to come out of our pocket no matter what. No matter what, they're the only one. And when we go to the county and we go to all the other surrounding municipalities and tell them that Lancaster County is coming up, why didn't you? Yeah, I. I mean, my vote is number two. I one and three. I was about to say I didn't really even mention. I mean, I think option three. I I know that project is. There's been rumors of that's estimated cost up to five, six million. I mean, but. I, if we're really, if we're getting twenty-five thousand dollars, well, I mean, to, to Andy's point, let's let's utilize it for us yeah. before having to utilize it to with a joint venture with uh, with Waxall. That's the most impending need, and we know that we're going to have it. We already know that there's like a hundred thousand dollars to purchase, right? Above and beyond what we anticipated, two hundred, we're at three hundred thousand. So yes, twenty-five thousand is going to be dropped above the better. And there's still an opportunity to take to apply for the critical intersection grant for funds for this roundabout it was I, I had that conversation with Bjorn and I got the numbers from Christina I got to see if there's a way for us to work it because technically since the project's already approved and funded he, he said that we had to make sure it was kind of struck like we couldn't use you know specifically for law enforcement it would have to be for something like being added or or some of the project so well, it doesn't matter how it comes in, as long as it comes in, we can appropriate it how we are. So we're going to have to pull the grant out of the general fund to pay for it. So we're yeah, so that's why. So basically, yeah, we'll have the twenty-five thousand for overages, but I'm going to see if there's a way to get apply for this grant for, from the county. Everybody, go number two. Yep. Yeah. Yes. All right. Do it. All right. Did y'all vote on that, actually? Yes. Okay, yeah. make sure. That's good enough. Thank you. Come on, keep up. Discussion of speed enforcement and traffic. Okay, this is on Black Hammer Road. I met there next to one of the fellows who were brought down at one of my many, many, many tours that I gave on Saturday at North Hall. He lives at 3417. Yes, uh, I'm not sure. Where is that? So, 
write it and it doesn't sound like it's just you, you can you can serve on board, it's just that you can't enter into contracts and start doing things. I know, that's what I said was uh, well, when you read it, I felt a little more comfortable with it. So that being said, if someone was interested in being on the board, you know I thought of right away is uh, she lives in Meadow Park and she wants a library years ago. She did for me personally. And I'll see what my wife is with for the yeah, session. Yeah. So the they would like to come and present during one of our summer work sessions and just give us three things. Look at that. Is that where you get that? Yep. Okay, all of a sudden you can reach out to our board. Yeah, he's like there. Just email me, I'll take care of it. Yeah. We need to have a million dash rates coming, so they just, the naming rights, there's opportunities. Oh, okay. The uh, the BMF is not going to be able to do that. She's in Portland, Oregon this week. Who? She is in Portland, Oregon this week. This lady that I'm going to do the name. Well, I will, she'll get here when she's not in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Well, that's what she holds right here. Well, I've got two emails already. Okay. She sent me an email as well, so I was hoping this.
the whole day. Leaders, doctors, staff, volunteers. I mean, if you think about it, that rarely happens on an honor roll event where you have that much um, you know, participation. By the end of the night, I took a picture when the lights went on in the stadium. There had to be close to five. Well, there. Wow. Well, thank you. I mean, there's people that come into the concert and everything that remember me from the elementary school. Yeah. Yeah. And one of my little bits, she said, yes, you do. We were looking for you when we were introducing I was looking introducing. I was saying that. Yeah, he was up at the time. He was talking to you. He was there until 9 o'clock. Okay. I didn't know. We didn't know you. I was just. But anyway, it says a lot about what you guys did. It was a staff at that point. I looked at it. Saturday, May 6th, 
I can I can check with him. We're probably we're a year out, so I doubt anything's on that day. But yeah. I mean, Bob and Claudia were busting a move at the end there. Claudia is the official uh, group. I was just saying, I'll, I'll email Miss Claudia, and, but, but we shouldn't have anything on that day where you're out. Yeah. And yeah. Like yeah, well, I'll check. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll, 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 I'll check with her next week and get back to y'all.
was it was a different group than what we initially started. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it was. Okay. But the initial was self this was a hundred thousand. But the reason I say that, and it's important because they have a network of people that are here and they put out a message that if I came on and you will get a lot more probably um, entries than that. I did like how they planned it. I think that was well planned because it was very a little bit of road to close off. And then they were on the trail within a matter of just a few, a minute or so. We've got a lot of the major stuff accomplished in the first year, so I feel like the second year will be a lot easier. But we've got what we need for you all to start the ball rolling and we've got to get yeah. a schedule in place to get a lot of other things. Do you want to give that food truck guy a call from my okay. time? Because um, I know the food truck thing was, there were a couple of little hiccups with the, the whole thing. So I think if we lock out food trucks early on, we'll be in good shape. We don't know, there's plenty of food trucks around that can do a really good job. If they are recap meeting, that's one reason the discussion of the staff that we wanted to get a date because some of the really big name food trucks, they look, people are looking for graduation parties, weddings. Yeah. So that would be really good. We have a really good selection in this area of food trucks. Yeah. Really high quality food trucks. So. Okay. Okay. Next up, uh, discussing uh, is it or any contract with Jennifer for weekly clinic services to help the tall and the amount of money exceeds $5,000? Alright, you got some bids? Yeah, you have three proposals. Um, this was this is a reasonable cost or a good company, huh? The monthly cost is two ninety nine a month, and that's so for them to come for them to come every week. Yes. That's pretty good. All right, good job. Uh, is there a motion? Yeah. Yeah. Further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Next up, discussion of village hall drainage issues. Uh, that's me, but it's really. It's really interesting. <laughs> when it rained here on Saturday, it was crazy. Like, it came down, like, the path that it would come down, it came down a little thing that went both ways. It was crazy, but we talked about it there in the store. Okay. So, so I, I said this. It's still going to rain big time the next day. Yeah. So, all the parents did it. It was insane. It was like a big night. It was like a big night. Well, technically we don't have to 
but it, it would be at the close of either the fiscal year or the audit, and we would know exactly how much is left in there, and then we would do a budget amendment to appropriate it from fund balance to the operating budget. But you need us to adopt the order that's meant to fund budget. You're on my budget right now. Yeah, this is just to kind of make Yeah, I'll make a budget to adopt the order that's meant to fund budget. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next up, uh, open topics? Nope. Anyone? No. This is not communications. Uh, really fast, you've got the list in front of you all. It has slimmed down quite a bit since we are past Marvin Day and past well, quite a few events. Um, take a look at it. Let me know if there's anything you want to add. Um, we're coming at the end of the school year, so there won't be any more of those either. Um, just let me know. One thing that I was talking about is advertising now, and it just at least putting it on the calendar kind of a little bit early, but just if people, if they see it, they can say, oh, I want to put that on my calendar, and that's all I got on August 2nd. I need to see if, I don't know if we have any of those promotional materials yet. Um, I don't think we even selected a date, but. No, no, it's June 2nd, it's August 2nd. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily need the commercial stuff, just like, you know, just start putting it out there. Okay. I'll, I'll do like a save the date sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've got that. That's all I got. Good job. I missed the end cost. I didn't see that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I'm Pentecostal, so. <laughs> <laughs> Only thing is um, the heritage subdivision rezoning public involvement meetings next Wednesday. They're doing two sessions, a uh, two to four and uh, Five to seven. On oh, Wednesday? Yeah. So basically, I would encourage, like I said, like last time, for you guys to, to uh, participate and be here. Um, however, no quorum. No yeah, quorum they're meetings. only doing two sessions. So. Yeah, all the things that there may be possible quorum. No decisions will be made, so it doesn't matter how we get this Did that go to the newspaper? Uh, I'll, I'll, we'll, do a, we'll do a potential quorum notice. Yeah. Uh, two, 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 two to four and five to seven. Uh, right. Uh, it's three to, yeah, that's what it is. Three to five, five to seven. You're right. Okay, Andy, five to seven. I'll, I'll be at one, three to five. Okay, Bob at three to five. Jamie, you're definitely going to be five to seven. Okay. You guys want And hopefully it'll be very well done. And it's going to be in the same format, same thing, right? Um, format wise, instead of like, you know, on the agenda from the first one, like they had like a presentation, all this stuff. They're going to just do like a 10, 15 minute presentation overview of the project and some of the changes. Um, one change being uh, the entrance. And, you know, there was two entrances. We worked with the DOT and fire entrance. So there's certain things on their side plan that's been yeah. slightly amended. So they'll kind of present that and then basically do the, the, do the remaining as questions, open forum. And the reason why it's also open forum is so people really complain like back by their buy ride in January of the times not working out and that's why they did three the last time so they're just doing two now and it's basically like hey like if you can't make it right at five you can still come at 6 30 and get the same overview and questions asked so so yeah I mean in it's basically a brief presentation just kind of going into questions comments and discussion or yeah okay. Any other questions? So Bob, Kim, and uh, Jamie at five seven. We're both. Wayne, if you can you attend the three to five? Wait, Bob said three to five. Bob said three to five. Andy, I said sorry. Andy, Andy, Kim, and Jamie five to seven. Bob. Bob, Wayne, three to five. Three to five. Okay. What time is that? <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, 
I will mention. I said I will mention. So yeah, those letters went out. Made sure to include a, a letter of this or a, a site plan. Yeah. Um, and apparently, yeah, there's been some next door slash comments stuff. So you know, we'll see who shows up in the public. Once again, it's informational purposes and for them to be able to provide, ask questions, and provide feedback, comments on the. I, I encourage you not to engage in the next door things. There's plenty of opportunity to get off with council. We'll see who shows up. And, you know, and, and we have these opportunities. Look at all the people that came And by the way, for the public, for the record, the chairs are coming. Yeah, they are very nice. Um, so let's do it through here. It's probably a better way to address it. Anything else you Um. Briefly, for the Preserve Internal Trail, um, working still on that, met out there yesterday with the trail builder and uh, Derek. Just need to probably go and confirm with the HOA on that additional kind of extension, but still moving forward as proceeded. I mean, even the trail builder said that he can make it work in the existing, but hopefully they'll grant us a little wiggle room in that other little wetland area. And still have not heard anything from the uh, <coughs> Property owners. Can, can we? Can I? Can I ask? Can I ask a question? I know it's not about. I'm gonna ask her this in the clarification. Do you know on how far through we got coffee with the council on the calendar? What? How far through do we have coffee with council? You, you have, through June. I was planning on bringing that at the June seventh meeting. That's fine. We were, we were just confirming. Jason, he didn't have any access. Yeah. Through June, so. So you, you, you guys have you, you must not have signed up for one in June. Um, uh, let me. I can check really fast. Um, when you guys, when I bring this back to you at the June seventh meeting, you'll pick at least the next three months, unless you want. Do you guys still want to do three months at a time? Do you, okay. Yeah. Um, problem. A little carrier pigeon over here. <laughs> All right, moving forward. Agenda items, review of action items. Okay, uh, Christina will uh, ask ask her. To, uh, you've already asked the deputies about to patrol that area. So, okay. Or to follow up with DOT as well. Um, I'll email the library representative. Hunter has his direction on the funds for the overruns. I'll email Marvin Ridge about the, the date for next year's Marvin Day. Um, Christina will execute the Jan Pro contract for cleaning for the Village Hall. She'll move forward on the fireworks, and Jamie will secure a band. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Anything else? Kim, let me get ready. Hey, ready? Uh-uh, hold on. Not that much, because a lot of this stuff is like stuff that you're going to have to look at their list and follow up on, but we've been busy with Marvin Day stuff. So everybody just look at your list. Look at this list and see what you need to follow up on. All that, um, I actually know it keeps today, the Urban uh -huh. Parcel, about treat, we're Re kind of redoing that whole ordinance and revising the tree planting list. We'll probably, instead of always having to bring it back to council, we're just going to make it like an administrative thing. Okay. Um, but that that's in the works, and that will probably be brought to you guys July, August ish. Perfect. Okay. So everybody's look at it. We'll do this in you know, the June work session. You guys a little bit of time to get some stuff looked at. Oh, we did that. We generally did our job here. The best day in the last week, like, we did that. We did that. We did that for a park. So change that now to the park. We got to do that. We did the We did the park. Okay, park. But the new, the new no left turn in the morning signs up. Yeah. Yeah, but it's yay big. <laughs> so I don't know how many more people are in it. You've got to go look at it. I mean, I'm telling you, it is tiny. I'll, have, I'll check it out. The dumb thing is when I ordered it, I said the same size as the last one we ordered. I believe you, but it is like, I mean, it's like, it's like a wee little sign. But Christina, if you can have the officers, then we're going to kind of just start so that people don't turn up there. So it really will help to keep the water out. Okay. Uh, cool. I'm glad that she was asked about the problem. Well, she just happens. Yeah, but still. But yeah, also, if you have that, it's a little sign. 
technically uh, the agricultural, agricultural on, sorry work on revivals what I what I will do is I will thank staff for the amazing job of Marvin Day and all the effort that y'all put in y'all did great thank you to law enforcement and all of the sponsors and all of the rest of the council for all the work they did um, it was awesome and uh, thanks for staff and all of the work that's gone into Village Hall since you guys moved in here and getting everything settled getting settled in the den and all that uh, still a little bit more to do but I know that everybody is all on top of it and pitching in as a team so That's, that's about it for me. Well, I would be doubling on, on uh, what Andy said there. This is the fact that May was a big month for us. It was a big month for Marvin. So uh, I, I think uh, it's just been just a great experience to be part of it. And, uh, but again, thank you to the staff, thank you to the council. It pulled it off. I'll go along with what you said about the staff, the council, and everything else. But one of the things that really made it work, everybody worked together. There was nobody that they was going. They didn't want to do something, if something needs to be done, they thought was somebody that could get it done. I want to know why I'm talking about it. That was on purpose. <laughs>
celebrate all of our volunteers, everybody that was involved. Like, just a proud day to be a part of this community. Um, Andy, nice job on the trim. It looks really good in the building. Joe, good job on picking out the lights. <laughs> what? Alright, um, <laughs> I'm going to start with something that happened just a few days ago. I just want to remember that I'm prayers to the community of Provaldi, Texas, and all of what they're going through. I can't, can't imagine um, the, the hurt and the, 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 the that's going on with their lives and stuff. So, Prayers to them, continued prayers. I mean, you know, we're a small town, we're uh, a unique town, and when you see a town, small town like that, and something like that happen, um, all I can say is, you know, it's, it, we all play a certain part as a community, and, you know, uh, it's, it's just heartbreaking, and, and seeing it go on is, is, is just really tough, and, and watching what's happening. So, prayers to them, our thoughts are with all of them. And then as far as the, um, uh, I will say, you, I'm sure your ears were burning about two hours ago because we go around the room at, at Luma and we talk about what's going on in our town and stuff. And I, I mean, it's just a couple of blurbs from the other towns, so in all fairness. And I, you know, I know I like to talk about it, but there was a lot to talk about. And I couldn't <laughs> thank you guys and be more proud of what you guys did as staff. Number one, which I said, I said, let's not keep a good staff. I mean, we want to keep staff around because there's issues like that going around in other towns and stuff. And uh, so I think we're, we're going in the right direction with that. But also um, just just thinking how this came together. I said, I've never been more proud of what people have said. And, you know, and it's, 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 it's going to be a learning curve because there's, there's so many things you don't know about. And that fact that Gene so is you know, kind of bummed that he never got over here. Even though I met with him numerous times and I went to see the movie. You and I had not talked to him. We I, were getting two words out that, of the That's end. okay. It was great. That's okay. The, the fact that he was here was great and that, that came together because I didn't think we'd see those pamphlets. So it was right. possible. <laughs> um, anyway, but thank you all again for that. I'm very excited for next year. I've got my, my uh, notes of uh, reaching out to the tables a lot right next year. Thank you again, and uh, with that, I think we're moving into the closed session. We're yeah. yeah. actually moving into closed session pursuant to NCGS 143-318.1181 for review of closed session. And to discuss personnel. And to discuss personnel at this point. Six. Six. Or not point six, but six. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 A